A Knight of the Seven Kingdoms by George R. R. Martin Chapter 1 The Hedge Knight The story offered here takes place about a hundred years prior to the events described in A Game of Thrones. The spring rains had softened the ground, so Dunk had no trouble digging the grave. He chose a spot on the western slope of a low hill, for the old man had always loved to watch the sunset. Another day done, he would sigh. And who knows what tomorrow will bring us, eh, Dunk? Well, one morrow had brought the rains that soaked them to the bones, and the one after had brought wet, gusty winds and the next a chill. By the fourth day, the old man was too weak to ride, and now he was gone. Only a few days past he had been singing as they rode, the old song about going to Gull Town to see a fair maid, but instead of Gull Town, he'd sung of Ashford. Off to Ashford to see the fair maid, hi-ho, hi-ho, Dunk thought miserably as he dug. When the hole was deep enough, he lifted the old man's body in his arms and carried him there. He had been a small man and slim. Stripped of halberd, helm, and sword belt, he seemed to weigh no more than a bag of leaves. Dunk was hugely tall for his age, a shambling, shaggy, big-boned boy of sixteen or seventeen, no one was quite certain which, who stood closer to seven feet tall than to six, and had only just begun to fill out his frame. The old man had often praised his strength. He had always been generous in his praise. It was all he had to give. He laid him out on the bottom of the grave and stood over him for a time. The smell of rain was in the air again, and he knew he ought to fill the hole before it broke. But it was hard to throw dirt down on that tired old face. There ought to be a sept in here to say some prayers over him. But he only has me. The old man had taught Dunk all he knew of swords and shields and lances, but had never been much good at teaching him words. I'd leave your sword, but it would rust in the ground, he had said at last, apologetic. The gods will give you a new one, I guess. I wish you didn't die, sir. He paused, uncertain. What else needed to be said? He didn't know any prayers. Not all the way through. The old man had never been much for praying. You were a true knight, and you never beat me when I didn't deserve it, he finally managed. Except that one time in Maidenpool. It was the inn boy who ate the widow woman's pie, not me. I told you. It don't matter now. The gods keep you, sir. He kicked the dirt in the hole, and then he began to fill it methodically, never looking at the thing at the bottom. He had a long life, Dunk thought. He must have been closer to sixty than to fifty. And how many men can say that? At least he had lived to see another spring. The sun was westering as he fed the horses. There was three, his swayback stot, the old man's palfrey, and Thunder, his war horse, who was ridden only in the tourney and battle. The big brown stallion was not as swift or strong, as he had once been, but he still had his bright eyes and fierce spirit. He was a more valuable than everything else Dunk owned. If I sold Thunder an old chestnut, and the saddles and bridles too, uh, I'd come away with enough silver too. Dunk frowned. The only life he knew was the life of a hedge knight, riding from keep to keep, taking service with his lord and that lord, fighting in their battles and eating at their halls until the war was done and then moving on. There were tourneys from time to time as well, though less often, and he knew that some hedge knights turned robber during lean winters, though the old man never had. I could find another hedge knight in need of a squire to tend his animals and clean his mail, he thought. Or might be I could go to some city, to Lannisport or King's Landing, and join the city watch, or else... He had piled the old man's things under an oak. The cloth purse contained three silver stags, nineteen copper pennies, and a chipped garnet. Like most hedge knight, 
The greatest part of his worldly wealth had been tied up in his horses and weapons. Dunk now owned a chainmail hauberk that he had scored the rust off a thousand times. An iron half-helm with a broad nasal and a dent on the left temple. A sword belt of cracked brown leather and a long sword and a wood and leather scabbard. A dagger, a razor, a whetstone, greaves and gorget, an eight-foot war lance of turned ash topped by a cruel iron point and an oaken shield with a scarred metal frame. Bearing the sigil of Sir Arlen of Pennytree, a winged chalice, silver on brown. Dung looked at the shield, scooped up the sword belt, and looked at the shield again. The belt was made for the old man's skinny hips. It would never do for him, no more than the halberd would. He tied the scabbard to a length of hempen rope, knotted around his waist, and drew the long sword. The blade was straight and heavy, good castle forged steel. The grip soft leather wrapped over wood, the pommel a smooth polished black stone. Plain as it was, the sword felt good in his hand, and Dunk knew how sharp it was, having worked it with whetstone and oilcloth many a night before they went to sleep. It fits my grip as well as it ever fit his, he thought to himself. And there is a tourney at Ashford Meadow, 